part of the tragedy of the Palestinians is that they have essentially no international support for a good reason. They don't have wealth, they don't have power, so they don't have rights. That's the way the world works, you know. Your rights uh, correspond to your power and your wealth. Same inside the United States, we shouldn't be surprised to see it. If you're a poor black kid in Roxbury, you don't have the rights of a rich person living in the suburbs, right? Uh, same in the international arena. So the Palestinians, I mean, they may get, you know, statements of support, but uh, and nobody's going to do much for them, especially when the U.S. Uh, threatens anyone who might try to do something. And what's called the national interest turns out to be the interest of dominant domestic forces in U.S. society. So the national interest means the interests of the very rich uh, major corporations, the ones who set government policy and so on. That's the national interest. And not the population. The population is basically irrelevant. The population often strongly opposes government policy, and they're simply disregarded. Overwhelmingly, people say there should be much higher taxes on the wealthy. Uh, what happens? Taxes on the wealthy go down. You know? uh, and it's the same on issue after issue. We do not live in a society in which the public determines policy. The public's around, you know, but they're basically disregarded unless they force themselves to, uh, into the system by serious activism.